Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Elavaris, and welcome back to another Chronomancer Raid Guide. In this guide, we are going to be looking at the more advanced aspects of the Chronomancer rotation, which comes mostly in the form of the opener. So there's a lot of debate back and forth between a lot of different Chronomancers about what is the most optimal opener you can pull off. Um, generally, most openers will be within a few seconds worth of uptime in terms of quickness and alacrity. So one opener might land you with 35 seconds of quickness and alacrity, whereas another one might land you with 33 seconds. So generally, it's not a huge deal. However, if you're looking for a more optimal opener to ensure that your allies are getting as much uptime as possible in terms of boon duration, um, then this guide is going to be for you. I'm going to be going over the most optimal opener I'm aware of, which was put together by a few experienced chronomancers that I raid with on occasion. Um, we're going to go into that, and we're also going to touch on a few mistakes I made in the last video, um, some clarifications, and some extra things you can do depending on what your um, traits are. So, um, let's see, the first thing we're going to go into is I need to, well, I need to switch back to chaos. Let's talk about the opener. So, normally the way I described how we're going to start is, you know, we start on Sword Sword, we cast both our wells, we weapon swap, we shield 5, Inspiration, etc. Well, when we're doing this opener, we're actually going to start on Sword Shield. Now, additionally, your opener will change depending on whether or not you're running Time Warp. Remember, if you need CC in a fight, you're not going to be running Time Warp. You're either going to be running Gravity Well or Signet of Humility. If you need Signet of Humility, it's likely you need to save Continuum Split for Signet of Humility. If you need to save Continuum Split, you will not use this opener, because most openers rely on Continuum Split in order to be defined as an opener, because the opener is different from your regular rotation, since you're casting things twice. You're casting things once in Continuum Split and once out of it. If you cannot use Continuum Split, the opener fails to be an opener because it does not change from the rest of your rotation at that point. So let's assume we're not running Signet of Humility and we're running Time Warp instead. If we want Gravity Well, actually we'll start off with Gravity Well and then I'll talk about the difference with Time Warp. So our goal here is we're going to be double casting everything except for our Gravity Well in this case. Um, by having everything be cast once in Continuum Split, and then cast a second time outside of Continuum Split. Our goal is to have both times that we're casting all skills, we are under the effect of the 33% increase to concentration from the, sig the Superior Signet of Concentration, or Sigil of Concentration, whatever it's called. Uh, superior Sigil, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> Wrong sword here. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so the spare Sigil of Concentration. Okay, so let's assume we're running Gravity Well. We don't need to save Continuum Split. So now, as I just said, our goal is to cast um, all of our skills twice while under the effects of that Superior Sigil. Now, when we cast it the first time, um, everything's in Continuum Split. However, that 7 seconds from Weapon Swap is not affected by going into Continuum Split. So that doesn't get reset, which means we're going to need to be swapping weapons multiple times we're going to do is we're going to start on sword shield. We're going to throw out our sword three. Remember, when we weapon swap, the superior sigil of concentration only procs when we're in combat. So by throwing out our sword three, we're going to um, put ourselves in combat. So we're going to start off with our sword three. Now what we're going to do is since we're in combat, when we swap weapons, we'll get our superior sigil of concentrations extra 33%. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap weapons. We're immediately going to cast sword five and go into continuum split. While in Continuum Split, we're going to blow both our Wells, our Signet of Inspiration, and our Shatters. Just like in the normal rotation, our goal is to cast Sword 5 into Continuum Split in order to fit more things in Continuum Split. So what we're going to do is we have our Sword 3 clone out, we're going to swap weapons. Sword 5, at the tail end of that being cast, we're going to go into Continuum Split. We're going to throw down both our Wells, Inspiration, and all of our Shatters at the same time. Immediately after Continuum Split ends, we're going to use Sword 5 again. So let's go into that right here. So we've already cast Sword 3, we're going to swap up in Sword 5. Tail end, we go in, we blow all our Shatters, our Wells, and our Signet of Inspiration. Now we're outside, we immediately cast Sword 5 again. Now we don't want to cast our Wells immediately now, because we have to wait for our cooldown. 
Now that weapon swap is off cooldown, generally you'd wait for it to be at about 2 seconds. We cast both our wells, we swap weapons, inspiration, shield 5, and blow all our shatters. One correction that I did make in the comments of my last video was that you want to blow shatters after you weapon swap, not before. Because when you're casting it before weapon swap, it's not under the effects of the 33% concentration boost from that superior sigil. So we want to use it after we weapon swap. Now obviously if you're using distortion for you know keeping you alive or diversion for CC, that doesn't really matter. But um, yeah, there's that. That's the basics of the opener. And let me go over it again here. Okay. Out of combat, we're going to recharge everything. Remember, we start on sword shield. Because our goal is to sword shield, we throw our sword 3 clone to put us in combat. When we swap the first time and we go into continuum split, everything we do is going to be under the effects of the 33%. Then, we weapon swap again and cast everything a second time, which, because of that second weapon swap, is also going to be under the effects of the superior sigil of concentration. So both times were under the effects. So, I'm going to go over it slowly one more time, and then I'm going to do it quickly and see what kind of um, uh, boon-up time we start seeing. Alright, so we're going to start off with Sword 3. We swap up in Sword 5 into Continuum Split, and we blow everything in Continuum Split. Out, now we immediately Sword 5 again. Okay, so now, we're waiting for our Weapon Swap to be just off cooldown, and since it is, we're going to blow both our Wells. We're going to swap weapons, Shield 5, Inspiration, and blow all of our Shatters again. And that's our second time. So you can see here we've already got 30 seconds and 25 of quickness. Now if I do that very quickly, you can see we start to see some pretty big numbers right at the start of the fight. As fights tend to get hectic, as you have to move around and take care of mechanics and such, um, your opener does become pretty important because that allows you to sustain your allies' boon uptime at the start of the fight in case you need to, like, for example, drop to go for a res or you need to run and take care of a mechanic and you're not too close to your allies to drop more wells on top of them. And that allows you to cover your allies for even longer before having to cast your wells and stuff again. Alright, so now that I've gone over the opener slowly, we're going to do it very quick to see what kind of boon uptime we can have. So we're going to start off with our Sword 3, swap weapons, Sword 5, immediately into Continuum Split, blow everything within Continuum Split, Sword 5 immediately after, now we're waiting for our cooldown. At about 2 seconds, we can start blowing our Wells, swap weapons, Shield 5, Inspiration. You can see here, we've got about 33 seconds of Alacrity and now 20 seconds of Quickness, but that was at like 35 and 25 respectively. And then we go into our normal rotation, where we do our Sword 5, etc. Now... <clears throat> I said I was going to talk about uh, what you would do if you, you have Time Warp instead. Well, what does Time Warp do? Time Warp gives quickness. It gives a lot of quickness to 10 targets, so it's actually <laughs> a ton of quickness. Um, now, the only problem is that if you're doing a one-clone Continuum Split, you cannot cast everything that you need to, like your Inspiration and both your Wells and your Sword 5 within Continuum Split along with Time Warp. So what do you do? Well, in this case, what I like to do is because Time Warp gives quickness and Well of Action gives quickness, I like to sub in Time Warp for the Well of Action's place in the initial rotation. So if I'm doing a one-clone Continuum Split, I will use Well of Recall, Time Warp, uh, Signet of Inspiration, along with the Sword 5 that we start off with, instead of, uh, and the Four Shatters, instead of both Wells, the Inspiration, and the Sword 5, etc. So let's take a look at that briefly. So we're going to start off with our Sword 3, as usual. We're going to swap weapons. We're going to go into Continuum Split here. You can see I'm dropping Time Warp, a Signet of Inspiration. We use Sword 5 again. We're waiting for our cooldown. At this point, we don't want to use Time Warp. We're going to drop both our Wells now. Swap weapons, Shield 5, Inspiration, etc. And you can see we have 26 seconds of Quickness and 36 seconds of Alacrity. So we even get higher doing that. It's especially good for Quickness uptime because this affects 10 targets, whereas your Inspiration and such only affects five targets so uh, and your wells too your wells only affect five so dropping that time warp in place of the well of action is very very strong so if you're in a fight where you don't need cc sub the time warp in your rotation in the place that the um well of action takes okay so now we're going to go into some advanced tips regarding survivability so we're going to take advantage of this trait here descent into madness which creates a chaos storm when you use a heal skill, 
and the second trait, Chaotic Dampening, which gives you protection when you get Chaos Armor. Well, how do you get Chaos Armor? Conveniently, a Chaos Storm, when you use a Leap Finisher through it, gives you Chaos Armor. So now, if we... Well, what do we have that gives us Leap Finishers? Well, we have Sword 3. The second part of Sword 3 here, Swap, is a Leap Finisher. Sword 5 is also a Leap Finisher. But additionally, remember... Our heal skill is the thing that summons, or that gives us the chaos uh, field because of this trait here. But remember that's, uh, that our heal skill also replenishes the Phantasmal Swordsman's cooldown, because it replenishes the cooldown of all Phantasms. So now, if we're on Sword Shield, let's say we've blown all our wells, we've used our, you know, our, we've used our Shield 5, etc., waiting for Weapon Swap. Now, instead of just Weapon Swapping Sword 5 and blowing all of our Shatters, we're going to do is we're going to weapon swap, sword 5, heal skill, sword 5 again, and then sword 3. And look at all those chaos armor procs. And now we've got um, like 20 seconds of protection. And then we can also obviously blow all our shatters, which I would have done earlier if I was actually in a fight here. But yeah, so now when we swap to sword sword, we use sword 5, heal skill, sword 5 again, and sword 3. Now if you're not running sword sword, like let's say you're running focus, this doesn't really work as well. But still, what you can do is you can always do your heal skill and your illusionary leap here. Did my heal skill not drop Chaos Armor? It was probably on an internal cooldown there. Yeah, 35 seconds. So it didn't actually drop there. But we could use heal skill and always use the Sword 3 to at least get some protection. And this is very valuable in fights where, you know, you may take a lot of damage where you're also running the Chaos line, like Doom, for example. Now, speaking on the terms of... Uh, replenishing phantasms with your heal skill. The Echo of Memory already can cast twice, right? So if I'm using Echo of Memory, I block attacks. If this blocks an attack, um, I can use it again. So let's say I could, ju I just used it twice. Well, the interesting thing about Echo of Memory is it also spawns a phantasm, and your heal skill replenishes phantasm cooldowns. So if I heal now, I can use Sword, I can use Shield for again which I just did, and let's say I blocked an attack, I can use it again, which means you could use it four times. Now, in practice, I never actually find myself needing to use this four times. I only ever really need to use it twice because you've still got a lot of blocks and survivability. You've got your sword two, you've got your sword four, you've got your distortion, you still have your dodges available. So you don't really actually need to um, use four blocks, but let's say maybe a healer's dead, you're under heavy pressure, your heal skills on cooldown. So in that case, I could see this becoming useful where you can use shield four, um, you can use it again if you block an attack, you can heal, then you can shield four again, and then use it again if you block another attack. So yeah, that is going to cover basically all the bases that I plan to cover in this video. Um, just as a quick recap, remember I made a mistake last video where I said shatter before weapon swap, shatter after unless you need to save some of your shatters. Um, the opening rotation I'll go over one last time here, I'll go over it slowly. So if I just remove the current golem, spawn a golem again, go over it uh, one last time. Remember we're going to, well, we're going to replenish all our cooldowns. We're going to start on sword 3, puts us in combat. We're going to sword 5 into continuum split, blow all of our wells and our inspiration. And I did it slow there, so I lost inspiration. But then sword 5 again, wait for our cooldowns, use our well, swap weapons, inspiration, shield 5, and shatter. And remember, if I'm using time warp, then I replace well of action in the continuum split with the time warp. Now when I go back to sword 5, I can use sword 5, heal, and then sword 5 again. And then I can sword three as well for tons and tons and tons of chaos armor. And then additionally, if I need to, I can use my heal skill with my sword four to do a quadra block. But you shouldn't generally need to do that. Not a super long video, but I hoped it helped some of you guys. So thank you very much for watching. And stay tuned for more raid guides coming down the road. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Cheers, guys.